Hello, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Nova 3D Whale 2 Resin 3D Printer. It's a 4K resin printer with an 8.9 inch screen, and it's got some features that not all resin printers have. Let's go ahead and give it a look. So starting off, just the usual disclosure, Nova 3D did send me this printer for review purposes, and I do get to keep this printer after the review is done. However, the words and opinions in this review are my own and are uninfluenced. So we'll start off with the specs of the Nova 3D Whale 2. As I said earlier, it is a 4K resin printer. It's got an 8.9 inch screen that gives you a usable print volume of 192 by 120 and 250 millimeters of Z. The Z motion on this printer is driven by a lead screw and it does have two heavy duty, high quality linear rails to guide the build platform. The construction of the machine is also very heavy. Uh, the entire machine itself weighs 13.5 kilograms and it feels very solid. Now, when it comes to assembling the printer, this is something that we did on a live stream. And if you don't wanna miss any of the future live streams on my channel, make sure you are subscribed and ring that bell. And when it comes to the assembly, like most resin 3D printers, it's a very simple process. Uh, pretty much everything's all assembled. The only thing we really had to go through is leveling the bed. And that is the first issue that I have with this printer. Uh, leveling the bed, I assumed it would be leveled from the factory because there was some residue from resin on it, which kind of denotes that there was a test print. However, uh, it was not level. We had to go ahead and re-level it. And when it comes to leveling the bed on this printer, it's not the most intuitive process. Essentially between the bed itself and the carriage that mounts to the frame, uh, there are six screws that you're gonna have to adjust and between them is a material that is crushable, it compresses. And what you have to do is basically tension these screws to various amounts to adjust tension on the material in between the bed and the carriage arm. And that is how you level the bed. It's not like other resin printers where you just loosen everything, come down and then just tighten up the screws and your level. You have to kind of tweak it into position. We did eventually get it leveled. Uh, however, when it comes to setting the Z offset, that was something, again, the instructions weren't really the best. Uh, we tried the way the instructions worked. What I ended up doing was just kind of eyeballing it and then doing consecutive test prints and then just manually adjusting my Z offset until I got to the point where I was happy with it. Now on the bright side of that though, um, after doing the initial level of the bed, it hasn't drifted. So after doing about a dozen so prints and test prints, I haven't experienced any shift of my Z. So it's a little finicky getting it set up originally, but once we got it good, it's been good. Now, as you can see, the enclosure for this printer is like most resin 3D printers. It comes up over the top. And again, depending on where you plan on putting this resin printer, uh, you are gonna have to ensure that you do have clearance above it to remove the enclosure. On the front of the printer, we have a touchscreen display and our power button. On the left side of the printer, we have an ethernet port and a USB port, and it's a USB-A port. On the right side of the printer, we have nothing. And on the rear of the printer, we have our power in. We also have a Wi-Fi antenna. And that is correct. This thing has ethernet support and Wi-Fi support. So what that means is you can connect this printer to your home Wi-Fi or home network through ethernet, and you can connect to it using Novamake. Novamake is Nova 3D's in-house slicer, and it actually allows you to upload files to this printer over your home network and control the printer over your home network. Powering this printer, we do have a quad-core Cortex-A7 1.5 gigahertz processor. It has one gigabyte of RAM and it has eight gigabytes of onboard storage. So what that means is you no longer have to upload files to this manually using an SD card or a thumb drive. You can drag and drop over your home network and you can store the files directly on the printer itself. Now, when it comes to the interface, this is a part of Novamake, which is Nova 3D's in-house slicer, but it is not like Octoprint. Unfortunately, you cannot connect to this on any computer on your network through the IP address. You have to use their slicer software to connect to this. Other supported slicers with this printer, along with Novamake, is Lychee Slicer, and they do have profiles for it. And they do claim that Sheetubox is supported by this printer with a plugin. However, I was unable to download the plugin from their website uh, to test that out. You can sort of get around that though. Uh, many of my prints, because I'm used to Cheetobox, I sliced everything, hollowed it out, generated supports in Cheetubox, and then I saved that STL 
imported it to Nova Make, and then sliced it from there and printed it. I also tested out Lychee Slicer too, and if that is your slicer of choice, it is supported by this printer. It uses the .cws format for save files that it can print from. Another thing to note about the construction of the printer is the print vat is aluminum, and it does have replaceable FEP sheets. It does come with two extra ones in the box. Now, one thing I don't quite like about the vat itself, it does have a mark for the max amount of resin that you should fill it to. However, it doesn't have any volume notation. So what that means is maximum, sure, but if you've printed a bit, you don't have any indication of how much resin is actually remaining in the vat. It doesn't have any tick marks for percentage or how much estimated remaining volume. So I've kind of gotten into the habit when printing with this printer, since it is a larger format printer, odds are you're gonna print larger things. Uh, before starting any print, I was topping it up to that maximum fill line, just to ensure I didn't underestimate how much resin was remaining in the printer. Now on the opposite, one good thing that I like about the print vat is it does have little legs under it. So what that means is when you take it out of the printer and you put it on a surface, the FEP film itself isn't sitting directly on your workbench, for example. It's raised up a little bit. This should help it from getting damaged and possible contaminants sticking to it and then getting onto the screen when you reinstall the printer if you don't give it a wipe down. So it is a resin 3D printer and it's relatively well built, but how well does it print? To test that out, I've done multiple prints in several different resins. I use Sriatec Fast Gray, Sriatec Smoky Black, and also Anycubic Skin. And over several days and weeks, I've done several prints on it. And I can say that the quality out of this machine is what's to be expected out of a 4K resin printer in this day and age. Uh, the prints came out very clean. I did have a few failed prints along the way, uh, just tuning in some slicer settings and adjusting things, finding how fast this printer could go. Uh, by the way, I found about 120 millimeters a second for the uh, up and down travel to be a happy medium in terms of noise generation and quick sprint speeds. And I'm thoroughly satisfied with the prints off this machine. I'll show some prints here on the screen. Uh, most of these were done using the in-house Nova Make Slicer. Some of the STLs were generated using Cheeto Box, and some prints were also done on Lychee Slicer. To test out the Max Ed, I printed this Eiffel Tower model, and as you can see, all the spires and grids came out clean. Now, this is probably the cleanest Eiffel Tower that I've ever printed on any of my machines, but Resin's kind of cheating when it comes to high quality detail compared to FDM, but we all know that. I also printed this werewolf uh, and prospector character whose name I can't remember right now from that Rudolph animation. Somebody let me know in the comments below. Um, those were printed in any cubic skin. Uh, I printed this totally not Sister of Battle. Uh, this was in Sriatec Smoky Black Translucent Resin. And just to try out how resin handles in a printer that's enclosed, I actually printed a Voron Design Stealth Burner front face in that smoky black translucent resin as well. And that's actually running in my current printer right now. And I do like that somewhat translucent smoky look of plastics. It reminds me of, you know, how we used to get those translucent Game Boy cases back in the day. Uh, Sriatec Gray as well prints beautifully on this machine. I did do several small test prints with that, including this Haunted Benchy and also this Spriggan model from Skyrim. But coming at this machine from somebody who doesn't have the most experience in the resin 3D printing sphere, I am satisfied with the machine. I believe it is a very good machine. Uh, it does have some quirks, mostly related to the bed leveling and the Z offset. But luckily from my experience, what I've seen is once you get those set up, um, those issues are pretty much resolved. I haven't had any issues with leveling drifting or my Z offset drifting. Um, it's a very repeatable machine among my test prints. Everything's been solid. Uh, it is very nice to be able to control this printer and upload files to it over my home network, not having to fiddle with SD cards and USB sticks. The machine itself is relatively quiet compared to the other machines in my household here. So all in all, I will say I am happy with this machine and I could see myself using it a lot in the future. Uh, if you are interested in getting this machine yourself, I will have a link in the description uh, to where you can purchase it from. And if you also have any questions about this machine, make sure you ask them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you wanna help support the content I create and the things I do, I have links in the description as well. I hope you learned something new today. On the way out, make sure you like that smash button. And as always, have yourselves a great day. Cheers.